What is up YouTube? Welcome back to Stocks by the Numbers. Today I wanted to dive into a company that I know a lot of people are familiar with. Name of the company, Eli Lilly, ticker symbol LLY, listed here on the New York Stock Exchange. This is a company, pharmaceutical company, health technology, biotech. Okay, let's see what the numbers look like. Right now, stocks trading 327.5 a share, showing a market cap here of 311 billion. They pay a nice healthy dividend to own the stock, but we have a PE here almost 50 sitting here at 47 and a half now obviously it's not the largest pe we've seen on this channel however on the flip side definitely pretty high right i'm sure an industry average is probably somewhere between 20 and 25 so to be sitting here with the 47 and a half pe they may be ripe and ready for a pullback but let's see the numbers let's see if if it warrants a pullback you know the earnings on the eps side here quarter over quarter look pretty healthy as you can see a miss here back in uh, Q2 of 22, but good beats there on three out of four. Uh, if we look here at the revenue here annually, you can see going from 21 and a half billion in 2018. Now they're up to uh, 28.3 back in 21, 28 and a half billion last year in 2022. And of course, pretty healthy income coming off of that revenue. Profit margins were down at sub 15% and climbed to north of 20 and basically stayed there and surpassed it for uh, the last four years straight, even going through 2020. So definitely looking pretty good so far on paper. But of course, we do have a high PE. Uh, I did want to draw back also, if you look up here at a five-year chart, see I drew these trend lines. This was back, uh, this is mid-2020. And again, you can see, I mean, even if you adjust these trend lines, really, any way you look at it, you know, you can call it a trumpet, you can call it a rising wedge. But at the end of the day, if you just scroll out, you can see, look, it had these big runs in 11 to 13, and then, of course, 14 to 15. But then, look, you know, went sideways and didn't do much for several years, because this is what I tell you guys about these companies when they get overinflated and get pumped up too much. You either need the company to pull back and sell off to you know, come down to earth and just be more realistic on paper. And also on the flip side, now these overinflated numbers, you need to, to give the company time to continue to grow their business. And then, of course, it will make, again, make the market cap to revenue comparison look more attractive. The PE will now be adjusted from, uh, you know, 65, 70. Now, all of a sudden, it'll pull back to like, you know, 33 or 35, and the company becomes significantly more attractive. And it prepares itself to take yet another leg higher, as we see here, 18 and 19. But just this massive straight up line here going from mid 2020, when everything really began to happen and more attention went towards these pharmaceutical companies, you can see the massive run up here. I mean, you know, stock was $165, hit a low of $128 towards the end of 2020, and then basically beelined all the way straight up to almost $400 uh, you know, just in the last uh, 24 months. Now, usually the average stock does not perform like this. And, um, you know, the reason being is because, in my opinion, people just piled their money into the pharmaceutical companies as basically the safest sector, a safe haven, so to speak, especially if they're going to continue to pump out, you know, all of these new vaccines and boosters, and there's supposedly all these new strains of all these viruses. And apparently now our number one priority here on this earth is to get injected 50 times a year so if that does happen to come to fruition then obviously these companies will be wildly profitable and will be the the biggest money makers really for any publicly traded sector out there but revenues growing you know sitting here again last year 28 and a half billion market cap 311 billion okay so the company trading you know nine times basically we could say nine times yearly revenue which of course is pretty extreme with a 47 and a half pe so obviously with this massive run-up and of course with these overinflated figures uh you could definitely say that you can be on the side to uh see a big pullback here in eli Lilly, and it will be justified and it will most likely happen sooner than later the one thing I will say, you know, the assets keep rising. You know, you had this dip in 2019, but 39 billion in assets up to 46, north of 46 and a half, and now up to almost 49 billion here in 2020. So 
you know, th that's what I'm saying. The company definitely looks good on paper, and I'm not saying that they shouldn't slowly climb and be a big winner for a lot of people, especially because they consistently keep increasing their dividend as well. But again, little overinflated, too high, too quick, so you can definitely see a big pullback here. If you look on the EPS side, you know, consistent beats year over year above estimates, you know, that's phenomenal. And same thing on the revenue side, coming in with a slight, slight miss of $48 million for the year in 2022. But again, overall on paper, the company really does look good. So I'm not taking anything away from it. It just might be a little overinflated right now in the current time, and we could probably get a better price. We could probably at least get this for 20 30% cheaper than it's currently uh, trading at right now. You can see the cost of goods, you know, bouncing around has been increasing the last couple of years, but they brought it down in 22, but the revenue does keep climbing. So obviously it basically offsets it. The profit off of that revenue consistently climbs, even with cost of goods and operating expenses slowly climbing up and increasing year over year. It's really not a big deal. You know, again, the operating income climbing from you know, the fives, the five and change up to seven in 2020, seven and a half, eight and a quarter. So again, on paper, the numbers do look very attractive for this company. We looked at the assets climbing with the liabilities, I guess you can say slowly climbing, but basically remaining relatively stable and flat for the last couple of years, but still seeing consistent climbs in the assets for those years. Uh, the debt obviously climbing slowly, but Every company basically has debt on their balance sheet, so definitely nothing to be alarmed about if you're a long-term investor. But again, you can see the PE, you know, a couple of years ago before it had that massive rally was trading here in the 20s, even in the mid-30s. Then it had a massive pop up to 45, PE 53, now sitting 47 and a half. So it's definitely due for a pullback. Price to sales ratio, you could see over the years, sub four, you know, five and change up to six, now north of 10. So this is why I keep saying, you know, it looks good and it, and it might be worth our attention in the future. However, we can definitely get it for a more attractive price, in my opinion. Price to book, again, you know, popping and dropping all over the place as low as sub six back in 2016, as high as almost 50 times book value in 2019, now trading 31 times book value right now. So again, really, any way you look at it, you can say that the company is overvalued currently and should be due for a pullback. You can see that, you know, this is why it consistently keeps climbing and consistently keeps drawing money in from investors. Because even with the return on assets, you can see really bouncing around, having big pops, big drops. It's been maintaining double digits for the last couple of years, you know, a, a low 11s up to about 14 and a half, and then 11.7 now sitting at 12.6, right? So again, the company does look good on paper. The return on equity has been inc uh, decreasing for the last couple of years. Really nothing to uh, be alarmed about. The return on invested capital, again, same thing, bouncing around, but maintaining that 20, mid-20 range. Gross margin percentage, again, high 70s, except for, uh, what was this, 2021 you know, the company is basically maintaining itself and consistently increasing revenue and profits. So again, even though it is overinflated, it is a good business model and it is doing good business. So you can't knock the company completely. But, you know, on paper, again, they do look good. The operating margin percentage consistently increasing, you know, 26, 28 percent, slight pull back to 26, then up to 29, maintaining 29 right now. The EBITDA slowly climbing, really. You know, this was the highest back in uh, 2018, I believe, at 34.4, but had a dip to 31.4 and then up to 33 and a third, 32.1, now 33 and a quarter. So that's why the company is maintaining some pretty healthy numbers here. The net margin percentage we were looking at before, you can see they were uh, low teens and even negative at times. And then having a big pop up to 20 and then well north of 20 and maintaining that percentage now sitting at 26 and a half percent net margin. So again, they do look relatively good on paper. You could look at the dividends also. This is what I talk about when I talk about long-term investing and more importantly, compound invested, doing that DRIP, that D-R-I-P, which again stands for the Dividend Reinvestment Program. When you invest into a company like this that is consistently growing and beating earnings and estimates and consistently increasing its forecast year over year moving forward, these are the types of companies that you want to tuck away shares of in your long-term portfolio. 
you can see, you know, the dividend per share back in 2016, $2.04 a share, yielding two and three quarters percent. Again, the dividend yield, that is the dividend per share compared with the stock price. So as you can see, the yield keeps decreasing even with the dividend increasing because of how much the shares of the stock have been appreciating over the years. But look at this, $2.04 a share, two oh eight, two and a quarter. And then they really began jumping it up in 2019 and 2020, giving more payout to the shareholders, north of two and a half a share, up to three, up to th 340, sitting here as of 2022 at almost $4 a share. So again, look at this, from 2017 to 2022, if you bought that in, a, in that five-year stretch, not only did you make money on your base, your principal, with the actual stock appreciating in value, but more importantly, your dividend has doubled over the years, giving you more and more shares or more and more income if you, uh, you know, take those checks, take take those dividend payments. But this is what I love here. Look at the look at the forecast. I've been looking at the forecasts for a lot of these companies that I've been looking at. Just curious to see, you know, what what the estimates are. And this completely blew me away. I mean, look at this on the EPS side right now. You know, for the last uh, two or three years, the company's sitting at about $8 a share. And on the EPS side, you can see, look, climbing up to 8 and a half, and then 11 and a half in 24, 15 and 25, north of 18 and a half in 2026. So this company is planning to be seriously profitable, hand over fist, inside of the next, um, you know, two, three, four years. So that's why it's definitely worth, in my opinion, grabbing shares of this company for your long-term portfolio. But I do think it's due for a sell-off. I've been talking about the market should be pulling back for basically the last couple of weeks. And then you see today, you see a massive pullback, roughly 700 points on the Dow. So this is why companies like this, that they pumped up, let the markets correct, let them sell off, let them take this company with it. And then you can step in at a more attractive price. Look at the revenue sitting, uh, you know, 28 billion and change for the last two years, <clears throat> excuse me, climbing up to north of 30 estimates for this year. And then look at this 36 and a third, 42.8, 48 billion, <clears throat> 2026. The, these are pretty impressive forecasts. And if it comes to fruition, you know, it's totally understandable again, that this company will continue to keep climbing. However, it should pull back and sell off. I don't, I don't want to say half the price, but again, pulling back to, you know, it's 327 a share, pulling back to 227, in my opinion, would not only be justified, but it would be beautiful for the average investor out there. Um, you know, not much going on here on stock charts. You can see the MACD has been pulling back for the last several months. It had the big spike here in uh, the end of January, it looks like. However, you know, it just recently broke this 50-day moving average after several months, and it's been bouncing around with a rejection here uh, on Valentine's Day last week. And you can see it now recently has pulled back sub 329.07, the 200-day moving average, and is now riding down the bottom Bollinger Band. So in my opinion, it's probably going to continue to sell off even with a weak RSI here of 36.5. You know, again, on paper, it's just overvalued and should be pulling back. Uh, the stock here is riding this 50-day moving average, which in the short term is going to be your indicator as to whether or not it really breaks and has a massive pullback. And in my opinion, it most likely will break this 324 that it's been consistently testing basically since the, well, not since the ball dropped, but we'll call it for the last four weeks straight. And uh, in my opinion, it's going to break that 324.07 mark and actually pull back to this moving average, in my opinion, of 207.32. I really think that's where it's going to go. And even if we quickly bring up the pivot points, you know, you can see that this is a big pivot point here at 322.50, right around the 50-day moving average here. So, you know, a lot's going to happen in the next couple of days or week or two that's going to show us really where this is going to go. And then you can see here the next support. We're looking at the weekly, but the next support level is uh, 271 about. So that's why if it does begin to drop, it will most likely go sub 300 and then you can probably buy it, in my opinion, for sub 250. So that that's when I personally would be a buyer. Again, rejecting off of this 200 day moving average. Next support level. This is the daily now, but next support level is down at 301. So that's why I'm saying it's going to begin selling off. 
and uh, it's most likely going to begin pulling back, in my opinion. But overall, the company does look good, and you may want to grab some shares in the future. But I'll leave it there. So once again, this is Stocks by the Numbers. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop it down in the comment section. I'm usually very quick to reply. Just like everyone on YouTube says, if you like the video, thumbs up. I appreciate it. If you like the videos, push the subscribe button. Thank you very much. And moving forward, like I always say, I understand markets are rocky, they're volatile, and they're uncertain. So I wish everyone success. I hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. I want to thank you for stopping by. Have a good day, guys.